Alright everyone, it's been a while since I've made some content. Um, I've had some projects that I've just been really caught up in and I came to a place where I feel like I was able to make a video. Um, I've been working on a wine rack enclosure that's just been really kind of an involved project and I came to a place where I felt like I would have some good material that I wanted to put out there just to kind of uh, help anybody out that might come across a similar type situation. So let me get you guys turned around here and I'll show you what I got. All right, so as you can see here, this is a custom wine rack enclosure. It's about nine feet, four inches tall. It's about 84 by 114 by 24 and it's been quite the project and it has um you know full length piano hinges that just go all the way up because there's going to be three eighths glass in these frames here this is how it opens up I've got my handles here like that and then like that So it's, it's, it's massive. Like the camera just does not do it justice at all. So anyways, the re part of the reason why I wanted to make this video today is this wine rack enclosure, it's going into a place, it's going into like a, like a penthouse condo. And so I had to build this thing in panels. And so I feel like there's so many guys out there that make these welding videos and stuff like that you know and there comes a point in time where you're gonna cross come across a project where you're very very limited on the welding aspect of it and so you're gonna have to do like a lot of drilling and tapping because that would be like the next best way to fasten material together without welding it so these are this so the main frame here is held up these are all quarter 20 uh screws and they're all um i think there's 19 per side and then these ones here are 832 screws about a, a quarter of an inch and then there, there's a top piece that's being painted but if you can see those three holes up there the top screws on also um anyway so i wanted to show you guys how and why you know, kind of like the method to my madness. So I have a, a piece of material here. Um, I got a couple, couple of different tap styles. This is what's called a spiral flute tap. And this is like a standard um, Hanson Irwin, just a straight flute tap that you can buy from Ace Hardware. So I wanted to just kind of also show you guys the difference between the two taps. So let me get you guys set up in the stand here. Oh, one more thing also, um, because I was using a lot of thread cutting oil, I get this stuff from Ace Hardware. Um, I like the viscosity of it and its ability to keep the chips from sticking together and stuff like that. It just works. You know, I'm sure there's better stuff out there. I get bombarded on YouTube or Instagram all the time with it. It's called thread paste and it just, I'm probably not going to buy it because I'm sick of looking at their ads. And then also, so, you know, for, for degreasing parts and stuff like that, um, you know, people, they'll get like a one gallon jug of like acetone or lacquer thinner to kind of like, you know, clean oil off their parts. Or though I saw this one guy and he was using like this little can that you poured it into and it was spring loaded and you push your rag onto it and it just seemed kind of like a lot of jimmy dickin you know so what i like to do is just buy a case of this stuff and then it works really well for just degreasing and blowing stuff off like really quick so sit tight
All right, another thing that I do is I'll take a little bit of my cutting oil. I'll get a couple little acid brushes like that, you know, you use for putting on plate, uh, soldering flux if you're doing copper. And then I use a, like a tin can and uh, it, one of these small uh, parts, magnetic parts trays from Harbor Freight because it, it'll hold it down and it keeps it from spilling. Another thing why I wanted to, to do this video is to just show you the difference between the two different styles of taps, especially if you're, if you're going into like some type of production work. So this is an 832 with a number 29 hole. This is also, this is called a tap starter. It's a very handy tool. You hold it like this against your surface and it just helps you get a really good start, you know, because everybody loves a crooked hole and a crooked, <laughs> trying to put in a, a crooked screw. So I'll give it a couple turns to get me going here and I'll take it out. So this is a, just a very traditional method of tapping holes. You know, you gotta you do about a quarter to a half a turn, bring it backwards, because what it does is as the chip starts to curl, you gotta, you gotta rake it back to break the chip off. And this can just be really tedious and it's a really good way to break a tap. You know, especially if, if, you, if you have uh, tremors or something like that, it can be really difficult. So, you, so now this is just a straight flute, traditional tap. You know, and these are great, like if you have a project, you know, you're trying to do for your kid or you want to help your neighbor out or your grandma out or something like that. These are great. But like when it, when it gets into like real true production work, you're going to want to use a, uh, a spiral flute tap and I'll show you why. So if you see how long that took, that just seemed like it took forever. And so when I was putting together that wine cabinet enclosure, I broke a couple of taps and I'll show you what I did to deal with that. So now I'm switching over to my spiral flute. You know, I also I just always just try to get in the habit of just keeping, whether it's drilling or tapping, just keeping it wet. All right. So I hope you guys can see this. So this is just effortless and as you can see I'll show you is it just you can just kind of go straight through with it and it the, the, the spiral design on it it just helps it like it just ejects the chips beautifully so you don't have to go back and forth to break the chips off when you're when you're uh, working your way through your material and I swear it takes like less than half the effort also. So, so those, if you can see, those are the spiral type chips that come out from using a spiral flute tap. All right. So anyways, I want to show you what I do when I break a tap off. So this is a 3 8 hole here. So let me take you over to the lathe and I'll show you what I got. All right. So here's a little piece of 3 8 bar stock. 
um, just regular old hot rolled stuff, pretty soft. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in my lathe here and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do to uh, kind of bail you out of a situation if you bust a tap off inside of a hole. Sorry about that. I had to go grab the oil and a, a drill bit. So I used like a, a stubby uh, pilot hole starter. Be right back. All right, so what I do when I'm tapping a, a bushing in the lathe, I put the tap in my in my tailstock and I leave my tailstock floating. And then what I'll do is I'll just take and real, let me get a little dinosaur juice on here. So I'll get it in here and I'll just kind of start it like real nice and easy. Like that. Just kind of gently, just kind of roll it in. Oh, sorry, I bumped you there. Shit. 
So that was, went really nice, just really effortless, especially for something that's such a fine thread. So there's just a little threaded bushing. So what I'll do now is the reason why I went with 3 8 is because. All right. So if you ever are doing a, like a smaller hole and you bust a tap off and you're in a place. So what I do is what I, when I busted off my tap is I just took my plasma cutter and then I just got right up close to it and I just blew out the tap and everything. I took a 3 8 drill, drilled out my hole, and then I take my threaded bushing like that. Oh, sorry. Like that. And then this is a, this is a little bit tall. Um, but so what you can do is you just, you know, countersink your hole and then you can just tack it and then, you know, buff it out, you know, deburr it and stuff as you need to. And it's, you're good to go. One more thought on kind of a closing note here in regards to um, like welding and glass work. Anytime you guys are doing any type of welding around a residential house or on a construction project is that when you throw sparks, the sparks are hot enough where it will melt the glass and permanently melt themselves into the glass and it will destroy the glass. I was at a house today over in Paradise Valley, Arizona. And guys, please like CYA, like put up welding blankets, boards or something. But if, if you are throwing sparks with a grinder at a window, those sparks just melt right into the glass. Slag will also stick right into the glass. And I'm telling you this because if you have a homeowner that's building a house or they have a nice custom home and they're the type of people that usually have enough money to hire a lawyer, you can, you can lose your shirt. I mean, easily without even trying. So please just be aware of your surroundings when you're welding around glass. Um, Anyways, I hope you guys found that helpful, especially if you might have a project coming up where you're going to be doing a ton of like drilling and tapping and stuff like that. Because, I mean, anybody can sit there all day long on, you know, let's run a bunch of beads, but that's only going to take you so far. So anyways, I hope you found this helpful. Sorry if I sound repetitive, but anyways, be blessed and I will see you on the next one. Peace out.